Q Sharon. It's been 10 months since the murder of 16-year-old Jason Carsley, who bled to death after a senseless and unprovoked attack. It was Jason's first day at work at the Continental Cafe on the Brockfield estate. He was killed before he could pick up his first ever pay packet. For me, a good news story is one that makes people talk, um, makes people think, um, and something that will be discussed, whether it's in bars or pubs or sitting rooms around the country. It's what people are really interested, what kind of gets them really is what makes a good story to me. Often it's ones which just have a very, very poignant human story. Because when it comes down to it, the news is just stuff that happens to real people. It needs to be something that's going to be compelling for people at home, that they're going to learn something from, and they're going to say, wow, I didn't know about that. They may say it with a smile, or they may say it with a very deep and bitter frown. It's all about connection, and it's all about honesty, and it's about trust, I think. Um, and because I've been doing this for quite a long time, I think people do, I'd like to think that people trust me. If truth be told, bad news does better news than good news. Because bad news gives you better, bigger headlines, more dramatic effect, often more dramatic pictures, and certainly uh, headlines, whether visual or, or written, which catch your attention. I think by the very nature of news, you are normally reporting on the worst case scenarios or the best case scenarios. And unfortunately, over the past few years, there have been so many awful, devastating stories involving young people, specifically with knife crime, with bullying, with things that are really, really important to people. And I think recently it's been worst case scenarios that have involved children. I think it is sometimes too easy for us to focus on stories where it's young people going out of control on the streets, whether it's binge drinking or knife crime. And I think that we've got to be really careful to not portray a whole generation as being a bunch of losers, because clearly they're not. There's, you know, the vast majority of young people, just like the vast majority of any generation, are great and hardworking and lovely and kind and humane and interested in the world around them. And it's just the minority, unfortunately, can sometimes get the lion's share of the headlines. The trouble about the press, of which we are part in television, is that we group people. If we say that young people are troublemakers, then all young people are tarred with the same brush. If we say young people take drugs, then all young people take drugs. If we say young people drink too much, the story that goes on all the time, that clearly means that every young person goes out every Friday night and gets monstered. Of course it's not true. Some of them do, some of them don't. They're all different, but as a group, they are young people. Young people are, for anybody who stops being a young person, probably, probably by the age of 20, Young people are that frightening group. You don't quite know what they're going to do group. The group you cross over the road to avoid group. There is probably across the whole media, there is probably a bit of negative reporting and an assumption, I think, from people that kids equals bad news. But I think it's something that we are aware of and we try and address. I'm actually honorary colonel of the Black Watch Cadets. And I see the best of young kids. And this is kids from all over the place from, you know, yes, they can, some of them are very well to do, some of them are middle class, some of them are, you know, they're, they're everywhere. Some of them are working class people, some from families from broken homes, and they are great kids. Every one of them are great kids. A lot of them have been really helped by the organisation. Um, and I've seen the best of, of, of young people, and it really actually really annoys me that there's this kind of thing of, all young people are hoodies and they're going to stab you, so be very scared. What a lot of nonsense, what an absolute lot of nonsense, what an insult to the vast majority of our young people who are decent kids. Yeah, I think it's important when, when, when kids are doing good works, if you like, or great charity acts or where they've got good stories to tell to make sure that people know about them. So it's kind of getting themselves publicity, I suppose. If you're a young person and you think you're doing something incredible and you think it deserves an audience, let someone know about it, whether it's your local newspaper, your local radio station, um, that kind of thing. That's how you kind of get things noticed. Um, I think you must try and make sure you don't just go, oh, well, there's no point in us being in the newspaper or on the telly because we're always written off as a load of, you know, ne'er-do-wells. So I think it's trying to get, get publicity for your, for your good causes, really, and for the good things that you do. My thought was that we get someone from the newsroom to take part, no, to dance or something. Maybe we could do a live broadcast from the actual hall. Make it fun, that beat, you know? Luke, you are monumentally dim. Well, you asked for ideas. Yeah, not from you, OK? I can do without your media studies take on this. Go and make some tea, there's a good lad.
Oh, don't bully people, David. I think it's a good idea. What, him? Professor Yaffle? Yeah, I think it could work. And you're willing to dance, are you? Uh, I didn't say that. Ah, uh, well. All right, then. All right, then what? All right, then I will. Now this I have to see. You'll have to give me a few lessons, though. Hey, yeah, no problem. You're sure you're willing to do this, are you? Yeah, why not? It's a good cause. When I was 20 years old, I was assistant news editor at ITN. Um, I did that alongside my university degree, so I kept my foot in the door all the way through university. Once I graduated, I then you know, came to ITN full time and uh, was promoted to deputy news editor, uh, which I am now, and I'm, I'm still the youngest deputy news editor that ITN has. You know, I've never really had an official day's training in my life in, in journalism. Um, you kind of learn a lot on the job. Um, which I think is very important, you know, the legal side of things and, 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 you know, how to tell a good story from a bad story. A lot of that you can learn on the job. You have to try to adapt and, and fit into a situation and you have to learn when, when it's a good time to speak up and when it's a good time to, you know, keep quiet because there are times that people will look at you and think, gosh, you're young, what do you know? But, you know, there are other times when actually they'll turn to you for advice because they know that you've got a different take on things. I think the industry is brilliant for young people because it's... To be honest, young people are much better at the news and working in this business than older people because they're really good at picking up new technology and it's changing every two years as far as I can work out. Every two months it sometimes feels. Anybody who watches 24-hour news these days would see that, that banner at the bottom of the screen which says breaking news. For people watching television now, that is common practice. If you go back 10 years, that didn't exist. That banner didn't exist. The, the, the idea of putting on a breaking news story while a, a news presenter is telling you about another story would be something that most people would have said that can't happen. I mean, you can't draw attention away from one story to another. Actually, you can. People do multitask. You do multi-watch in the new world. Sometimes when we're running a strand of reports, we'll ask people to contact us. Um, a great example is we did something about antisocial behaviour and we asked people who'd suffered at the hands of people to get in touch with us. We had hundreds and hundreds of stories of people and we went and followed up what they did. So it's really nice when you hear from your viewers about stories that they want you to cover. I think a lot of people now um, don't realise that journalists do turn to Twitter and Facebook and other social networking sites for stories. You know, Twitter is a great source for breaking news, especially from eyewitnesses. You know, and it's got a great search function. So, if, you know, for example, um, there's an incident somewhere in London or somewhere in the UK. You can instantly search for everyone who's tweeting about that one incident. And you can actually then get in touch with people who are on the ground, who have been there, who might have video, who might have pictures, and you can then in turn use that to your advantage to get that on air as quickly as, and as accurately as possible. I think if you've got an exceptional young person who's done amazing things, that's, for me, I would put them on my show. Absolutely. I absolutely would and be glad to do it. Um, because I think that it's all about sort of teaching people by example. And if you see, you know, somebody who's, who's done amazing things and one kid watches that and thinks, I can do that as well. It's brilliant.